before the human video game arrived in college football. Before that mesmerizing talent led to all those unforgettable highlights. Even before the arrest and Bobby Bowden praying for a misdemeanor, there was the Clemson game on September 20, 1997. The moment the college football world was introduced to the sheer majesty that was Peter Warwick. The moment it was clear Florida State, with its rich history of elite skilled players under Bowden, had never produced anything like this. I don't know why anyone would turn away when he's on the field, Clemson coach Tommy West would later say. Deep into the fourth quarter, and after work had shown a national television audience how unique speed and athleticism translates to 372 all-purpose yards, there were 10 players within the first 15 yards and more than half a field until the 11th, Peter Work standing at the 5. Clemson kicked it to Work anyway. The ball traveled five yards into the end zone where Work caught it and begrudgingly took a knee. Brad Nessler, calling the game for ABC, demurred that Work would have liked to have taken the ball out. Color commentator Bob Greasy then quickly shot back, yelling with a combination of awe and disappointment, I wanted to watch it. This, ladies and gentlemen, was life at FSU when number nine was on the field. You simply couldn't turn away. From Saturday Down South, in association with Texas Pete Hot Sauce, I'm Matt Hayes, and this is Saturday Lives Forever, a college football podcast reliving the greatest players and moments of the sport's rich history. It's January 1999, and Peter Work is staring at a first-round grade from the NFL Draft Advisory Board. The boy from Bradenton, Florida has come a long way, but there's still one lasting, nagging void. None of his four seasons at FSU have ended like he envisioned. He redshirted his first season in Tallahassee in 1995. He and his roommate, another receiver by the name of Randy Moss, watching FSU games and unable to help a team that was an offensive skill player or two away from winning the national championship. He played a small role in the 1996 team that was forced to play rival Florida a second time in the national championship game after beating the Gators in the regular season final. FSU lost by 32 points. By the end of 1997, and weeks after his breakout game against Clemson, Work had become an important part of an unbeaten FSU team that only needed to beat Florida to play for the national title, and lost as a double-digit favorite. A year later, in 1998, the Knowles found a way to the national title game, but an injury to starting quarterback Chris Wanky left them shorthanded, and they lost to Tennessee. Three seasons three years of crushing national championship disappointment. Maybe the right move was returning to FSU and taking one more shot at it. Wanky, one of his close friends on the team and a failed professional baseball player before signing with FSU as a 25-year-old, constantly preached about the value of the college experience over the pro business. When Warwick announced he would return to Florida State, he did so by proclaiming after three years of heartbreak he wanted to win a national title for Bowden and the Seminoles. The NFL money could wait. At least he nailed one of those two statements, because the money, in the end, couldn't wait. It's October 7, 1999, and work is five weeks into a season for the ages. The Knowles already are penciled in for the national title game. No one is touching this team. And then it happened. Warwick and teammate Lavernius Coles went to Dillard's department store and shopped for clothes. They went through the checkout line and paid significantly less than retail price. When they were caught by police hours later, they had paid $21.40 for $412.38 worth of clothing. Warwick would pay heavily for a measly $390.98 discount. He was suspended indefinitely by FSU which had recently passed a zero tolerance mandate for student athletes who are charged with felonies. Any student athlete with a felony charge on their record cannot play sports at FSU. Warwick and Coles were initially charged with felony burglary, but the state attorney had to decide how to prosecute. It was then that Bowden, when asked about Warwick's arrest, uttered the phrase heard around the sports world, proclaiming he was, quote, praying for a misdemeanor. Wouldn't you know it, the state attorney reduced the charge to misdemeanor petty theft and Warwick's punishment was a two-game suspension 
and the invaluable loss of the Heisman Trophy. Wark's competition for the award was bruising Wisconsin tailback Ron Dane. Both Wark and Dane stayed for their senior seasons, but Dane, despite more than 7,000 career rushing yards, didn't have the allure and attraction of Wark. Not only was Wark can't miss TV at FSU, he got significantly better with each season. He caught 53 passes for 8 touchdowns and a 16.6 yards per catch average as a sophomore. A year later, he earned All-American honors with 61 catches for 12 touchdowns and a 20.2 yards per catch average and was set up for a monster season with a loaded FSU team. Five games in, what seemed like a Heisman coronation ended in desperation with Bowden praying for the misdemeanor. It's January 3, 2000. The millennia has arrived and Florida State is staying in its team hotel just off Bourbon Street on the night before the national championship game with Virginia Tech. The world is aglow with what seems like a week-long millennia celebration, but Bowden is pacing the makeshift meeting room in the ballroom of the hotel. He can't get the image of Hokies quarterback Michael Vick out of his head. If anyone were like Pete, Bowden thought, if anyone had that dynamic ability and could scare the devil from you every time he touched the ball, it was Vic. And he played the most important position on the field, where he touched the ball every single offensive play. Bowden pulled Warwick to the side of a meeting room and wrapped his arm around the shoulder of his 5'11", 190-pound rock of electricity. He pulled his bifocals to the end of his nose and peered over the top of him. Pete, Bowden said, I'm worried about number seven. Every time Vic makes a big play, you have to counter it with a big play. Wark smiled and told Bowden not to worry and began to walk away. Bowden grabbed Wark's arm and this time with more certainty said, Pete, every time. Three years earlier, Wark arrived on the big stage of college football with an 80-yard punt return against Clemson one of a handful of big plays and a remarkable performance of 372 all-purpose yards. It was the first time the college football world truly grasped the enormity of Wark's 37-inch vertical, 4.440 speed, and greasy slick moves. He caught a 48-yard deep ball against Clemson, high-pointing the ball like climbing a ladder. He went 80 yards on a simple out-and-up, outrunning two defenders who had the angle on him but stared in shock as work ran away from them. Why not finish it how it all began three years earlier against Clemson? By the end of the Sugar Bowl, work was named MVP of the game and had 220 all-purpose yards on eight touches for a remarkable 27.5 yards per touch. He caught a 64-yard touchdown catch on a double move, just like he did against Clemson. He had a 59-yard punt return for a touchdown where he scored untouched just like he did against Clemson. He caught a 43-yard acrobatic touchdown pass where he twice tipped the ball to himself before securing it in the end zone, just like he climbed the ladder acrobatically against Clemson. After the game, while Bowden and Work sat at the post-game press conference, Bowden put his arm around Work again and said, you could coach a long time and not have one like Pete. Work finished his career as a two-time All-American and set a then ACC record for career receiving yards with 3,517. He still holds the FSU record for career touchdowns with 31. In four years at FSU, Wark had 4,862 all-purpose yards on 331 touches, averaging 14.7 yards every time he touched the ball. He also threw two touchdown passes. Three years ago, FSU announced on social media that it was retiring Wark's number 9 jersey. LeBron James saw the announcement from the Florida State football Twitter account, retweeted it, and wrote, The reason I wore number 9 at wideout in high school. Congrats, Peter Wark. All these years later, you still can't turn away from Wark, no matter who you are. <laughs>